and patterns with a focus on high scale. These are a few of the system design patterns that I especially uh, like and I think are important. Of course, in one lecture, we could not scan the whole pattern, so we will only scan a few of them, but a very important few of them. The first pattern is simply a number. There are 2.5 million seconds in a month. So when you heard in a lecture that a company says we have a 1 a billion requests per month, this is how they calculated it. First, remember the number 2.5 million, which means that if you have one request per second, you have 2.5 million requests per month. If you have 40 requests per second, you have 1 million requests per month. If you have 400 requests per second, you have 1 billion requests per month. So this is a very good number to remember, 2.5 million seconds per month, and this is our first pattern. Our second pattern is to benchmark and profile and iterate your system design. You do not start from a complex system design. A complex system design is not the target, it's a necessity. When you have to support large scale, it's not that you love to create a complex system with many components, with redundancy and with whatever comes with it. It's that you have to. However, there is a better way to come to that process and to that end uh, target. And it's simply by iterating and benchmarking and profile your design in uh, each uh, step. This also forces you to create an intermediate uh, system design where you create them in the target and you have in your mind uh, the ability to 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 improve them. Uh, if you already know that from day one you will have a very large scale, then you can do all these iterations in your mind and not necessarily in uh, reality. High availability. Uh, when you do your system design, it's not only about supporting scale and supporting the user, it's also what happens when one of the boxes or one of the servers uh, fails, or multiple of them, or a whole data center. So high availability should be part of your system design. System design is not only solving the problem, it's also solving the problem of what happens when your system does not work as you expected it to be uh, working. And by iterating, you create uh, good concepts and you find the places that you can put high availability into work. Traffic is not evenly uh, distributed, which means that if you have a very famous uh, actress with uh, many followers, then uh, this uh, actress will have much more traffic. This means that when you uh, split, if you shard your data, your customers into uh, multiple servers, then if you put all these a famous actresses into one server, this server would be much more uh, busy. It would have much more traffic, of course, depending how you uh, system design your problem. But remember that traffic is not evenly distributed and when you put, when you design your system, you should take that into consideration. Many times people are not taking this into consideration and designing system as if uh, all traffic is homogeneous. Relational is not a negative word. Relational databases are, have been around for a long time. They are bulletproof and they are solving you many problems you will solve by hand if you will not use them. If you have a user a table with 10 million users, you can store them into a relational database. You can even do sharding. You can do many things. Um, and you cannot do them with MySQL, so uh, with NoSQL. So remember, you should use relational data where appropriate and non-relational where appropriate. Scale gradually. Think of your system as starting from one user, then progress to 10 users, then to 100 users, and then to the million users that you are uh, going to have. This will create a good picture. This will uh, show to you and to the others why you put uh, that box? Why do we have the CDN? Why do we have multiple uh, web servers? Okay, we have them to support the difference between X and Y uh, scale. We have a reasoning for it. We don't just dump servers in there and increase the complexity. 
I would start with the most uh, simplest uh, design and evolve. What is the most simplest design? The most simplest design is a single server uh, and having a single uh, application server and even the database on the same server. And then you uh, start splitting. Uh, monitoring. Monitoring is the same pattern. When you do a system design, you don't only do a design which solves the user's uh, problem or the problem which the company tries to, to resolve. Your system design should also resolve your future self which would come to the system after a half a year when you have customers and you have a problem and you need to troubleshoot it. If you did your system design without any consideration of monitoring and logging and other aspects such as uh, security, but especially monitoring and logging, you will not have uh, ways uh, to troubleshoot your system. I've seen this uh, many times that monitoring and logging were added only after the first uh, problem happened. Uh, you can invest even half an hour into thinking how to integrate monitoring and logging into your uh, system design. This will save you time and this will make your design applicable also for QA and uh, other uh, personal uh, using our system. This will help DevOps install your system. When the SQL database starts uh, consuming uh, too much CPU, this is good because this is, means that you have a lot of traffic. You start by breaking it apart. You first take the statics and the objects and the files from that uh, database and uh, move them to some other stores like uh, S3, which is an object database or an internal uh, object database for your uh, specific uh, company. You uh, also uh, separate the SQL uh, database into a separate box when it's starting to get and consume too much uh, CPU. This is true for any service. You have even more scale, great. You take a load balancer, you put multiple web servers, your load balancer is starting to put into multiple uh, web servers. You separate the read and the write. This is not only good from programming perspective, but also from scale perspective. From the scale perspective, you can uh, offload all the reads into uh, separate servers and the master will consume the uh, writes. Um, in the, this way, you replicate. Uh, from the masters uh, to the uh, readers. You have even uh, more uh, demands and more visitors coming at, at your site. You need more scale. Uh, don't let the request even come, uh, arrive to your cluster. Simply put some static content on the CDN and some of the requests will hit the CDN, uh, get back to the users even with a whole copy of the website and the request simply don't get into your clusters. This is the best if you can reach this uh, situation. You have even uh, more demands for scale. Put a memory cache, like for example, a Redis. You simply put a key value a store memory cache and all the hits, you are trying to get the hits not to reach your servers. You're trying not to solve the problem. By putting a memory cache layer, your application servers can first uh, consult with the memory caches and then return uh, the results immediately without any calculations. Um, if you have a uh, different uh, scales in uh, Black Friday and uh, Cyber uh, Monday, you can have a uh, very high uh, traffic in this uh, situation. Put uh, auto scaling into a uh, work by putting uh, auto scaling into works. You utilize your uh, DevOps team to increment and decrement and decrease the number of servers that uh, you have. This gives you a good solution and saves you money. More scale, when you do the writes, don't do them immediately. First, but put them into a queue. This can be uh, maybe with a forward uh, cache and you put first the writes into a queue and then asynchronously you uh, write them. Uh, you have to treat eventual consistency and uh, stuff like this. You read the, all the things to a memory cache layer, you do sharding, you split the uh, customers to multiple uh, servers. So if uh, customer A comes, you go to uh, one of the servers, you do federation. By federation, I mean, it's like microservices. You split the services and the databases according to the business uh, logic and that uh, they handle. So you have a one, a one a section for customers, which involves a few databases and uh, services, one section for products, and you separate them. 
it's like multiple companies. You have multiple companies. When a request from user come, it doesn't necessarily go to all of the companies. This was our uh, brief summary on patterns for designing a highly scalable and uh, a good system design. Thank you and see you next time.